Welcome, everybody, to Generation Viewpoint. I hope you're having a great week, and I am Freedom, and sitting next to me is... Evan. Oh, man, that was weird. I don't know why you just did that. That was very strange. Right now, people are going, what's wrong with that kid? (laughs) You're so weird. (laughs) I'm telling you what, man. You know what's funny is we've got all this energy. What are we going to do with it after we're done podcasting? We're going to have to find something to do. I'm going to go for the run. A run? Yeah. All right. Very. It's good. like four degrees outside, but let's four go. degrees outside. It's cold. I don't think it's four degrees outside. I think it's a lot warmer than that. You know. I mean, it is Probably. May for gosh sakes, or June, or whatever month it is. It's yeah. halfway summer. But <laughs> hey, so I got a question, Ev. Okay. So there's a lot of conversation about smartphones and growing up and things like that. Okay. Yeah. What age do you think is a the appropriate age for a parent? Okay, to give their child. A smartphone. 13. Whoa. Now, you you ripped that off kind of quick there. Yeah. Please explain your answer if it was that easy to explain or to give. Well, I I didn't get a phone until I was 13. Correct. As you know. Right. And I just, the way I look at it, I didn't need a phone until I was 13. Right. So when I see little kids that have these smartphones... Mm-hmm. They don't see the significance of the phone, I guess. Mm. So I kind of, I think it's ridiculous when kids that are that young mm-hmm. have a smartphone because they don't actually need it. Okay. Until they're at least thirteen. I mean, and so other cases they might need them when they're a little bit younger, mm-hmm. but when they're like ten and nine, like they don't need it that young. Okay. All right, so uh, may I instigate? Yes. Okay, all right, good. I just want to make sure I can instigate because, well, even if you said no, I was going to do it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. That's true. All right, so uh, uh, how do we... Okay, so when I was younger, I didn't have a computer. Yep. Other people had a computer. Mm-hmm. And somebody would say, well, you don't really need to have a computer. Yeah. Right? But then my argument would be, yes, but the people who have computers are getting a jump start on those who don't. And they'll understand how to use it uh, more readily as a useful tool and be able to be at the forefront of breaking information versus where I'll be at a disadvantage because there's a whole group of people who know modern technology before me. Mm -hmm. So let me just instigate conversation. If a smartphone today is used as a business tool and in a media for communicating, Right. Yeah. Uh, do you, don't you think that they should have it younger so that they become very handy with it and useful and know how to use all the things and are cutting edge on technology since technology is so important in everything that we do day to day? No. Wow. Okay. All right. Because you're not going to be in one of those situations mm-hmm. until you're 17 or 18, not when you're 13. But don't you want it to be second nature for them because they grew up knowing what to do and how to handle technology? No, because I didn't have my first smartphone until I was 16. Right. Okay. Okay. And I'm 18 now, and I'm using them better than Mm. other people that have had them for longer because I learned how to use it. Right. You don't need 10 years to learn how to use an iPhone because it's built so that anyone can use it. Yep. All right. So does that make sense to you? It, it makes sense to me. I was just instigating a point. Yeah. Uh, not that I, that's my opinion. I would probably go on your side of it where, you know, one of the reasons we never got, got you guys phones early was because you, we wanted you to learn more face-to-face communicating and staying mm-hmm. in touch without being stuck in a phone all day. And yeah. when we were home, that you were with us, mm-hmm. not with your friends on a phone someplace, you yeah. know, like staring at it, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the reasons why we did that. But that's, you know, every home, home is different. I remember the one time I, w- I was still upset that I didn't have a phone. All my friends had phones. Mm-hmm. And one of my friends lent me their email and password for AOL so that I could go on AIM, <laughs> yeah. which is all the kids, most kids probably don't know what that is now. Yeah, uh, like, I, I, yeah I caught it like <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was interested in a girl at a, at the time, and I wanted to talk to her when we were in New York visiting uh, Grandma and Grandpa. Okay. And... um. So I snuck into the computer room when no one, like we weren't like hanging out as a family. We were just kind of dispersed. Yeah. 
So like, I was like, okay, like they can't yell at me for like hiding from the family or something. Sure. So I was like, sure. as long as I sneak in here all quiet, it'll be all good. And I went on AIM and I was talking and mom walked in and she almost put my head through the screen. Like she was, she was livid <laughs> that I was on there for, and yeah, I never understood it. Uh, yeah. You know, if she hear, listens to this episode, she's going to freak out that you just said she almost put your head through the screen. Yeah. Because I'm sure she never <laughs> laid a hand on you. No, she didn't. But she, <laughs> like, she did the Evan Andreas Kong. Whoa, that's a nice face. I so, like that one. Wow. Yeah. All right. So that answers that. So then, all right. So let's take this another step further then. Okay. Mm-hmm. So tablet computers and iPads and things like those. Okay. Mm-hmm. Should those be the primary way that students learn in elementary and middle school now? Instead of textbooks and carrying those big yeah. books around, should they just have that tablet or iPad and use that as their tool? I don't know. Because, I mean, those books made me a little stronger for so that the ladies, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> but at true. the same time, it's convenient and it, it gets the job done. Yeah, I guess so. Thinking about being up with the times, mm-hmm. okay, and technology, right? When's the last time that you saw somebody instead of carrying around a laptop, they're carrying around a couple of books on the way to work? It just doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't. So why are we still using textbooks to learn in school yeah. instead of modern technology? Yeah, and that's why that that's what I was. I guess I didn't convey that well enough because okay. what well, I'm picturing. Um, at school with apps and different stuff like that, you can do so much more yeah. than the textbook. Okay. So, but yeah. then at the same time, a lot of kids are careless with electronics. Mm-hmm. So you'll be replacing maybe a hundred iPads every year. Well, there's way to get cases. I mean, we're not talking about yeah. the cost of it or anything like that. I mean, obviously that's one yeah. of the reasons, but although textbooks are crazy expensive, if you ever mm-hmm. had to buy them for college, you know that. I mean, they're yeah. over $300 for one book, mm-hmm. uh, you know? Yeah. I mean, my words. So, all right. I mean, it's just an interesting question on how do we keep up with technology, but yet not let te- not get on technology too soon when you're growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when we've talked about it on the podcast and we've heard in the news before about people losing their social skills because everything is technology based, mm-hmm. right? Everything's communicating through a screen or whatever, big or small screen, yeah. instead of knowing how to do it face to face and verbal cues and things like that. Yeah. You know, so I guess it's a balance, but I don't know. Separate topic your favorite pet. What was your favorite pet ever? Like that I've owned? Yeah, that you've had. You've had a pet. Your favorite pet ever. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had a favorite pet. Well, a family pet then. No, like, I never really liked our pets. Okay, good. You and I are in the same place. Because I don't <laughs> like our pets either. I guess the, the question I have, <laughs> we're really going to tick off a bunch of people. Yeah. Right now because, I mean, we know people who and love their pets. Like, I love animals. Really love their pets. I love animals. Yes. I just... We would never be cruel to an animal. No, no. Like, I never. would never do that either. Yeah. Right. But our dog just doesn't shut up. Yeah. Like, she just barks, barks, barks at the TV screen. Yeah. And she's settled down now. Yeah, yeah she's not but as like, bad. But, like, she, when the doorbell rings or something yeah. like that, like, she won't stop barking. So annoying. You can't even let somebody yeah. in the house. So I yeah. haven't... So if I had to pick one, I would pick our dog just okay. because I love dogs. Okay. All right. But at the same time, she she's yeah. not a great dog. <laughs> so out of all the pets that we've had... Or mm-hmm. let or let's let's open that up. So the pets that we've had and the pets that you have met of others. Mm-hmm. Okay. So all the pets that you have met, mm-hmm. have you ever met or known a pet that was like, wow, it would be worth the aggravation of taking care of an animal as part of my daily chores? Yeah. Really? There, Uncle Nigel's dog. Yeah. I want it. Oh. Like every time I go, I want I go through my mind of a way I can stuff it in my <laughs> bag so dog. that I can take Are it. Are you a dog napper? <laughs> oh my word, really? But she's such a amazing dog. Like I want a well-trained dog and she is one of the best trained dogs I've ever seen. Now, why do you say that she's so well-trained? What is it about her that makes you think that? She never barks. Right. She listens to every command that Uncle Nigel does because he knows how to 
yeah. controller. Right. And she's just super cute. Yeah. And okay. All right. See, I, I don't know of a dog that's worth... Like, I I don't know. Maybe it's just getting older. I don't know what it is. But I just like to be free of things to take care of. Mm-hmm. So, like, a pet to me right now is if we want to go somewhere or we are somewhere that we have to be like, oh, we got to leave early because we got to go back and let the dog out or something like that. Like all I can see is the nuisance of the animal versus the benefit of owning one. Yeah. Y- you know? Mm-hmm. And I know that's going to make people upset because people out there love their dogs and cats and I don't have any problem with that. But I just don't relate whatsoever. Like not at all. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But all right. One more question for you. All right. Well, maybe two, but yeah. one more for sure. Okay. Okay. Does your neighborhood, where you grew up and live, define who you are? No. 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 Mm, no. No. Mm, maybe a little. Okay. All right. But I see little little uh, <laughs> lights firing. In well, there. I'm I'm mostly thinking because. A lot of the people like that lived where we lived, yeah, weren't techno or technically like technology driven. Well, we live in a farm country community, yeah. right? And then at the same time, they a lot of them were druggies. Like if you went well, to the our the the community park, yeah, there was always a group of people down there, yeah. That's everywhere you go. There's always going to be a group yeah. like that. So it wasn't necessarily our community. It just, yeah. I mean, that's everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I guess the question is, you know, do you become a product of your environment? So if you grew up in a city, does that define who you are as far as, you know, overall versus if you grew up in the country or you grew up in a, like that? I th- thing? Experiences in your life definitely shape you. Like there's no denying that. Yeah. So living in the, I can see more. If you live in like New York City, mm-hmm. that's going to shape you a lot because um, you're going to be possibly a little tr- little trustworthy and a little more angry <laughs> yeah, because of all the traffic and the people that try and pull stuff on you. Sure, sure. So, and then in the country, a lot of people are friendly. And I'm, I'm not, I yeah. don't want to be stereotypical about no, it because no, no, there's jerks think, everywhere and amazing people everywhere. And I think that people would agree with you. I, I think that in the city, people know their neighbors more than they do in the country. Yeah. Because they all look out for each other. They know when a stranger's on the block. Even though there's a thousand people living on that yeah. block, they know. Mm-hmm. And I think that people in the city, um, you become more streetwise, so there's a benefit there. Then in mm-hmm. the country, you're more trusting. So those are two benefits on either side. Yeah. You know? Now I can tell you one thing that when somebody from a city comes to the country, mm-hmm. they think that they're smarter than everybody there. Not everybody, but overall, because they think they've seen more mm-hmm. and know more. And and so they almost feel like they can get away with more when they come to the country. Well, that's why there's billions of movies that have that storyline. Uh, well, it, it's it's yeah. interesting. So they're uh, they've been defined by where they grew up, mm-hmm. and they think that people who grew up in another where are defined by where they grew up. They've never met them, right? But they've yeah. made a a stereotype definition and defined them. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So would you rather grow up in the country then or in the city? Country. Really? I don't like the city. You know that. I do. I, yes. So we spent four days in the city uh, last fall, mm-hmm. uh, you and I, and we had a great time there. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. And you did not like the city. But that said, don't you think there's a lot of things there, though, that would benefit you? So let's say you're interested in podcasting and uh, edit work and photography and video and things like that. There's a whole lot more of that and people doing it in a city than there are here. Yeah, yeah. So why wouldn't you want to live in a city when you could be surrounded by people that are interested in doing what you Mm -hmm. want to do? No, I I definitely see where you're coming from. Um, I just... I don't like being in that kind of environment, even if it's going to benefit me a lot. Like I'd rather go down to to Atlanta, okay, or some well, that's other a city down there. I know, but it's less compact and it's easier to live on the outskirts there yes, in a nice right. place. You're right. That you're right. So you're I right. just feel like I would rather go somewhere there, even if New York, because New York does have a lot for a lot of different people. Yeah. It's just not for me. I've okay. gone to New York City 
dozens of times, and every time I'll be there for four hours, yeah, and I'll be exhausted because <sighs> I have to interact with people all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I love the city. I would I would live there in a in a second. Yeah. So. <laughs> you say all the time because you can eat somewhere new every day, every for day, six years, and every never day. double up anyone. It's fantastic, and yeah. there's always something to do interesting. There's yeah. museums and there's shows and there's yeah. all kinds of cool stuff to do yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like I just love that. You know, I had to be surrounded by people who were thinking faster and doing bigger things more more frequently and at a faster pace. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. those same things happen here where we live, which is in the country. There's a lot of smart people and a lot of businesses that are developed in our area mm-hmm. and a lot of brilliance, but it's not so compact and happening boom, 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 like yeah. so many people at one time. Yeah. You, you know, so you don't mm-hmm. get that that mojo or whatever you want to call it. So Yeah. Interesting. All right. Very good. Well, I am done picking your brain for the day. Is that okay? Or should I pick your brain one more time? No, please don't. Okay, I won't. My, <laughs> my brain's almost gone. <laughs> well, I asked you that question, and you're like, uh, no, uh, maybe. So I saw the lights getting a little energized there. But all right, well, let's wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for another great episode of, epi- of uh, Generation Viewpoint. And we're so thankful for you guys to be with us each and every time that we, uh, we come online. So hope you all have a great week, and can't wait to see you again. See ya. Remember, we're on iTunes and Stitcher, and as always, thanks for being awesome.